Today I'm going to talk about another DPC++ example, image convolution. This is a part of the DPC++ tutorial series. Image convolution uh, is to modify the values of each pixel in the image using information from neighboring pixels. We use convolution kernels, or often called filters, to define the influence of neighboring pixels. Using different filters, we can generate different effects on the original image. For example, we can use a blurring kernel, which takes the weighted average of neighboring pixels to reduce the large differences between pixel values. Here are some example filters. A shows the original image. B shows the uh, blurring filters applied to the original image and generating a new picture where the image is kind of blurred. Another filter is called edge detection filter, which can be applied to the original image, and now the resulting image shows clearly where the edges lie. Let's take a closer look at how we apply a convolutional filter to an image. So what we show here on the left side is the source image, which has 5 by 6 pixels. And we have a filter, uh, which is a 3 by 3 filter. And we're going to use this filter to overlay to the original image and do some computation. The computation we're going to do is to multiply the corresponding pixels with the corresponding position in the filter and then add all these products together. So take a look at this example. The pixel here, the value is 1. And then the corresponding location in the filter is minus 1. So the product of these two numbers is minus 1. The second pixel is 4 and the corresponding location in the filter is 0, so the product of these two numbers is 0. And likewise, we can calculate this product, 6 by 1, so that's 6. And we do this for all the pixels corresponding to the filters. So these are the uh, multiplication, and then we do uh, accumulation at the end. The total sum at the end is 7. So the corresponding location uh, in the original image will be changed to 7 because this is the center of the filter and the um, sum of the, all the products is 7. So we basically we're going to move this filter uh, along the uh, x-axis and the y-axis to cover every single pixel in this image. When we say every single pixel, actually we have to um, deal with the pixels on the boundary uh, in special cases. Because if you apply the filter here, and then of course the left side uh, of these three um, values in the filter will not be able to perform the multiplication because the pixels are out of the boundary. So we have to deal with these special cases. So this is how we apply convolution filter to an image. And you may notice that there are a lot of parallelism that we can take advantage of. Specifically, uh, filters can be applied to individual pixels in parallel. So when we apply this filter uh, on this small region, and given enough resource, we can apply the same filter on a different region at the same time. And uh, because we can do that, and naturally we can use so-called divide and conquer approach to divide the whole uh, problem into smaller tasks. The second parallelism we can take advantage of is the pixel-wise calculation of the filter value. So when we apply this filter onto this small area in the original image, the multiplication of these pixels with the corresponding location in the filter can be done in parallel, given enough multiplication units uh, in the hardware design. And that's where the FPGA can help us. We can uh, use the abundant resources in FPGA to exploit these two levels of parallelism.
Before we implement onto FPGA, let's look at if we implement this operation in C. How are we going to do that? So on the right side, we have an example code that will go through the original image and apply filters uh, to each of the pixels. So the first four loops are iterations through the whole size of the image. So we go through all the rows and all the columns. And for each pixel identified with, our, uh, with the row and column, or specifically with this i and j, we are going to apply the filter uh, on this pixel. And to do that, we need to calculate the neighborhood pixels. And the size of the filter will determine how wide we're going to cover around this pixel. So we actually use half of the filter width because we're going to go um, from both the left to the right side and also from the top to the down of that pixel. And for applying the filter, we actually go through the uh, horizontal dimension and the vertical dimension uh, as we do on the original images. So we use these two variables, L and K, to go through every row and every column uh, within the filter. And use these loop iteration variables, we can calculate the indices used to access the pixels in the image. So IJ is the uh, location of the original pixel, and K and L is the, uh, the indices that we use to calculate where exactly we need to apply the filter. So R and C will give us the um, pixel location in the original image. And then we do some boundary checking to make sure that this R and C are not going to be uh, beyond the border of the original image. The actual computation is like this. So we'll use R and C to get the uh, value from the original image. And we're going to multiply that with the corresponding uh, value in the filter. So we use K and L to calculate the uh, location uh, within the filter so that we can retrieve the value and then uh, apply that to the multiplication operation. And then we're going to accumulate the products to the sum. Once we are done with uh, all the uh, values within the filter, then we can uh, write the new value, which is the sum, to the image uh, location that you want to output. Let's talk about one uh, implementation that uses buffer objects. So buffer objects are the uh, objects we use in DPC++ to store data. And you can use buffers to store uh, any customized data uh, structure that you want to use. Uh, you, you, it's similar to um, malloc uh, that you allocate a buffer in typical C or C++ programming. Here's how we define a global buffer to store the input and output images. So we declare a buffer type and uh, it's going to be a one-dimensional buffer and the each element in the buffer is a floating point number. The name of the buffer object is image in buff and image out buff respectively. And uh, we're going to use image in and image out. These are the uh, host side buffers we already allocate. So image in contains the original image and image out will be uh, the host side buffer we're going to put the output. Declaring these buffer objects will allow our kernel function to access uh, these locations on device. And then we'll define the size of the buffer, which is still one dimension, and uh, we use the size of the image to specify the size of the buffer. And uh, next thing we're going to do is to create a range object to iterate through all the pixels. In this case, we use a two-dimensional range object, and its name is numItems. And one dimension is the row dimension, the other dimension is the column dimension. And use this numItems, uh, this range to two-dimensional range, we will be able to let our kernel function to go through all the uh, pixels in the image. And using the kernel function, the iteration 
through the kernel um, pixels will be automatically uh, generated at runtime uh, so that we can go through the uh, whole picture. Next, we're going to create a buffer uh, to store filter and uh, set the filter width. So it's similar to what we did in the previous case. We allocate this buffer object, and uh, this is for the filter. We name it filter buff. And filter in is where we store the uh, initial values uh, for the filter. Uh, this is the memory region on the whole side. And we use one dimensional range, and that's going to be the size of the buffer. And then, as we did before, we compute half of the filter width so that we can use uh, a um, plus and minus to go from the left side and well, from uh, top to bottom. Here's the source code we can have to instantiate our kernel. First of all, we use qsubmit to uh, create um, a command that will be put into the queue. And this command is itself a lambda function. And the uh, handler is to provide an abstraction of this uh, lambda function. And uh, this lambda function will provide accessors to uh, the buffers we just allocated. And also, uh, we will be able to instantiate our kernel. So the first few lines are creating accessors. Uh, this is the SRC pointer is to uh, create an accessor that the kernel function can later use to access data in the buffer uh, that we created to store the input image, the original image. And we specify type as read-only because we don't expect to change the original image. Uh, then we declare an, another accessor, uh, which use a different method to do that. Uh, we can just call the um, image object and uh, call the function member function get access. Uh, in this case, uh, this is to store the output image, so we'll declare the access mode as write. And similarly, we'll uh, create an accessor to the filter. In this case, we're going to be reading from the uh, filter buffer. Next, we'll use a parallel 4 uh, to run image convolution in parallel on device. And note here that we uh, define a parallel 4 where the first argument is the uh, range 2 uh, num items that we're going to uh, pass into this lambda function. The lambda function defines the what we do actually on the kernel. And uh, the variable we pass in is named item. So item will go through the whole range specified using num items. So item here is also two dimension. In the lambda function, uh, the first two lines that we do here is to uh, get the row and column information. Recall that this item is the way we iterate through all the uh, pixels in the image. So dimension zero will give us the row number, dimension one will give us the column number. So for each running instance, this row and column will be different and that's exactly how we go through every pixel in the image. And then uh, next we're going to do um, the things we did before. We calculate the uh, half of the filter size. We uh, set the filter index for iteration and we initialize the accumulation variable. The rest of the code is very similar to what we did in the C implementation. Uh, so you can see that we uh, go through the rows and columns within the filter, and then we calculate uh, the actual row number and column number to retrieve the um, pixel value from the source image. And we also did some boundary checking. And after that, uh, we um, multiply uh, the source image pixel with the filter value, and then we'll accumulate to sum. And at the end, we will write the uh, accumulated sum to the output image at the corresponding location.